Uh, today I'm making a sand and clay mortar for going into the mass heater and there's not much on it online so I thought I'd film this stage as well. What I got in here is just a high clay subsoil. It's, you know, predominantly clay, there's not much silt in it and there's bits of gravel and stuff all mixed in with it as well. Uh, and I've put enough water into the mixer to cover that up. It's, um, you can see here, it's been soaking for a few days so it's nicely softened but, you know, that is pretty much clay with just a little bit of gravel binding it together. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch this on and give it a really good churn and get as much clay as I can mixed into the water. So that's been churning for four or five minutes, not for very long. Next step, I'm going to get this sieve, which is not particularly coarse. It's what, about... I don't know, four mil, three, four mil across. And I'm gonna pour the liquid component out of here through the sieve into the bucket. See here, that's just predominantly gravel. There's a little bit of clay left, but it's mostly just gravel. So I can get rid of that and then do the next load. It really doesn't matter if I spill much, you know, it's just soil that's been put through the cement mixer. It's effectively free and it doesn't even take that long to prepare. So then we're getting into the bigger, chunkier stone here, but you can see that's still just stone. So I'm going to get rid of that. So what I'm left with is this stuff here, which is like um, a good thick cream, almost double cream in consistency. There's a little bit of gravel left in it, but that doesn't matter anyway because we're making mortar with this. So I'm going to get my wheelbarrow. So I'm going to get rid of everything that's left in the mixer. Because there's still a little bit of gravel and grit in there, so I just want to get rid of all the big stuff. That's good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that clay back into the machine. So I know that that's almost a bucket of clay. Now what I'm going to aim for is a starting point. This is really good quality clay. Um, in fact, just the subsoil here has been used as a mortar between stone on certain buildings. You know, there's not many people, you know, it's not necessary to add sand to it. So I don't really have to worry about having too much clay because when you've got the wrong type of clay, it can crack when it starts to dry. This doesn't do that. We're very lucky in the clay that we've got on the site. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna add enough sand to this to make it really nice and thick. Um, that'll make you know a nice mortar that'll hold its own weight but will also squidge a bit. Uh, so really I'm just gonna keep adding clay to it until I get to that point. Ideally I'd like to start at a starting point of three buckets of sand to one of clay but I'm not gonna be fixated on that because you know the water content might be different between batches and so on. That's basically what I'm looking for. Uh, it's really not rocket science with this. It's a lot more forgiving than conventional mortar is. So next thing I'm gonna get a bucket of sand. That's my first bucket of sand, so we'll put the mixer on. Nice. I'm going to need at least one other bucket. Ah, 
That's getting there. It's going to be at least one of the bucket, though. That's good. Whoop. Right, we'll give that a mix. That looks pretty good. So basically what we're making here is really a form of cob, but without any of the fibres in. It doesn't need that sort of lateral support. It's just basically being used to trim out the bricks and make a nice, uh, a nice brick stack. Let's have a look at that. You can see that it's a little bit wet still. I want it to hold its weight a little bit better than that. As I say, if I just you know put two stones between that and it dried, it'd be work really, really well. But if I put three or four courses up, you know the weight is going to start really pushing that out, and it might throw my levels out. So we're going to put that back on, and I'm going to put one more. Well, I think we'll start putting it in a bit at a time rather than a whole bucket now because we're getting it down, we're going to dial it in. So let's give that another mix, that it really you know, mix through thoroughly. And we'll see what sort of uh, consistency we're at, but it should be getting pretty close now. One of the benefits of this type of mortar is I've got a really almost unlimited working time. So if I'm halfway through the job and I just get tired or something else happens and I have to leave it, it can just sit in the wheelbarrow, it's not going to harden up, it's not going to cause me any problems at all. But uh, let's have a look. What it could do is dry out a bit, but I can just put that back in. That's still a little bit wet, but I think that's mostly because it needs a bit more mixing maybe. Let's have a look, let's get a piece from another area. No, that's still quite wet. So we'll switch it back on and we'll add a bit more sand. Okay, that's about two thirds of a bucket there. Just wanna go a little bit at a time. I've got more clay. But I'd you know, rather just make this batch and see how we go. Um, because you can see it's a really fast way of processing clay in bulk. It's really not a big deal. But at this stage, we can even make this in large batches and set it aside and come back to it in a couple of weeks. But once we put the straw or the fiber components into it, you know, that can rot out if it's left wet. But it's not an issue when it's in this stage. Let's have a look. And that's another benefit, of course. I wouldn't be doing this with my bare hands with a cement-based mortar. I mean, I do, but it's not good for the skin. It's really quite unpleasant. That is pretty good at that point. If I give it a wobble, you can see how much movement we've got in it. But if I put that straight on my hand and I apply downward pressure, that holds pretty still. So I'm gonna give the wheelbarrow a quick rinse because it's still got a little bit of gravel in it. And then I'm going to dump that into the, uh, into the barrow and I'm going to take that into the house and start building with it. <laughs> 